Hi Scorpio, welcome to your mid-November 2022 general tarot reading update. It's Raina here. Yeah, I always, I well, I should say, I usually pick the sign that is where the sun is currently. So that's you. Happy birthday to you guys that are born um, towards the last part of the sign of Scorpio. You have a lot going on. Or you say mid mid Scorpios. Just coming off of that um, lunar eclipse in Taurus. There's your card. <laughs> Ooh, interesting, interesting, because I was thinking of work matters. Um, but it could be, who knows, it could be both because the lover's card doesn't have to be just like relationship related. That could be actual, like a choice that you have to make. Um, and some of these cards, you know, are kind of dramatic. I mean, um, the page of swords can be. I, I think of the, the typical Scorpio person as being kind of like the page of swords where they're kind of suspicious or like looking around, watching their back. And so the heart of the matter and even this card and the death card, uh, but with eclipse energy uh, being so prevalent, that idea of kind of the emotional uproar, if that has occurred in any part of your life, you know, that kind of makes a little bit of sense. The heart of the matter is the seven of wands. And this is a card of pushing back on maybe people who are trying to put you down in some way. That's how I see it. Like it's called, I've seen um, the phrase stand your ground before in one of the interpretations, but I have another deck which I wish I'm missing one card. And I love that deck because it's the wild unknown and it, it's like very scorpionic and it would have been, it's perfect at this time of year, but I have to find that one blasted card. But anyway, um, this, uh, that deck has the seven of wands as like a flame, like a single flame. So I think of the inner flame and I do connect it to this idea of being in a defensive posture because we have to protect our dreams. So, you know, when I look at the past position and we have the chariot card, this is a card of victory. So sometimes when you have victories um, in your life or some kind of uh, success, I think that's what they call this, like a success. Um, but it's like, it, it's, it's something that you really might feel proud about Scorpio because you had to go through a lot to get there. The horses of duality, you know, the extremes, and you had to kind of really keep your head to have this happen. So when you have success, it can draw out people who are really, I mean, ultimately they're, they are insecure about their own lives. And so somebody else's success, uh, especially if it's somebody that they know personally, it just highlights to them how they feel unsuccessful because they make it all about them. And they can, you know, sometimes when you get those like little underhanded comments, that's what's going on. That person is envious and they're trying to kind of throw you off your game, kind of knock you down a peg and things like that, which, you know, that kind of sucks when people do that, right? Because you're kind of like, wow, you know, do I really, you know, aren't you somebody in my corner? Like what's going on here? And the truth is that um, a person like that is um, feeling bad about themselves. So they may really care in some cases. I'm not saying that all of these people are like secret enemies or anything, but it still sucks either way, you know, when you are put in that position of having to deal with it. So uh, understand that success can bring out uh, the haters. And this could even be your significant other, the higher messages that it's over with, that maybe a relationship is dead. 
uh, you know, dead sounds horrible, but I mean that you, you no longer have that connection that you once had. And that might be because you have kind of grown out of that friendship or that relationship. And if you are, um, you know, kind of, if you have that self-awareness, it allows you to accept that with grace and go, okay, well, I guess we're just not on the same page anymore. You don't have to make it a big theatrical number that, oh my God, this friend is the end all be all of my life. No, I mean, even if this is like a very old friendship, they, you know, at that time in your life, you may have been in a totally different space and now you're not. And now everything has changed and it's all good. It's all for your highest good. And who knows, maybe after this lifetime on the other side, you will talk to them and they'll say, yeah, I remember when this thing happened and we were there. Oh, well, we were playing these parts and I know I'm, I'm getting way into a different uh, realm here. Um, what crosses you is the uh, page of swords. So like I, I would say, especially for work related and romantically related relationships, this is most, this card is most, um, relevant. So let's say that this is a, um, marriage or, you know, a committed partnership that you feel is a serious relationship where this is going on. Uh, this, oh, you know, um, yeah, that's an important point. What could be going on where somebody is criticizing you and that's why you're in a defensive posture? If it's that partner, they could be doing so because of what they're up to. So this, the Page of Swords is about being the spy, the spy card. And, uh, you know, Scorpio should be in the dictionary, you know, under spy, a picture of a Scorpio person, because you are like very suspicious or you tend to be, especially if you have Mercury in Scorpio as well. Or <laughs> I'd say like a conjunction between Mercury and Pluto and all of those configurations. Uh, Pluto in the third house. Now, what that, what it means is it's not saying, you know, just trust everybody. Everybody's on the up and up. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that your, I would say, love of intrigue can create a situation where you get, you, you're with a person and it's really like, um, it almost devolves into this situation where you get like a, it's like a perverse thrill out of trying to bust this person, trying to catch them in the act. Uh, because that, that suspicious mind loves, um, to feel vindicated, but there's a paranoia there sometimes as well, where your mind can play tricks on you. So, and, you know, you can create these self-fulfilling prophecies. If you have trust issues and you're projecting that onto other people who may be completely above board, you're going to destroy relationships. So it's a very uh, fine line that, or, or, you know, like a, I can't think of the appropriate metaphor, but, you know, um, you know, the, a tightrope act, trying to not be a fool and not allow somebody to, you know, get one over on you, but by the same token, not being paranoid. And so this could be like a work related thing. Like maybe you got a promotion and you know, the people around you, the, they used to be your coworkers. Now all of a sudden you're telling them what to do and they're like not having it. And they're kind of like, you feel like they're kind of conspiring behind your back. So it kind of feels like, um, not pleasant. And the death card could be like, it was already over with. It was already a toxic environment. What's coming in is the eight of pentacles. And this is a card of maybe getting training for something. You might be wanting to shore up your um, skill set because maybe you're going to be looking at getting another job and you want to have, you want to have as much, as many credentials as possible. Um, something along those lines. And that's why you're doing it. Um, 
what you don't want to do is put your energy into relationships that are kaput. Um, and I am not the one to tell you if your relationship is over with, not just because of <laughs> a tarot reading on YouTube, but I'm just saying that if you know in your heart of hearts that it's all over but the shouting, then trying to make it work, you're making it from your own um, point of view or your own perspective. It's not a mutual effort, and that's the problem. The outcome is the lover's card. This is about really choosing love over um, whatever it is that is going on. If this is a toxic relationship, is that that is your end goal is to have that intimacy. Actually, that nakedness of those people on that card is to symbolize intimacy, like a very deep bonding and some relationships are anything but that because they're coming from a place of suspicion. So the two parties are kind of like um, not on the same page, not um, respecting one another uh, and what they stand for. So that kind of thing can be problematic. Let's pick just, I'm going to cut the cards in half and just pick a clarification card in case it is a choice. Okay. Ten of Wands. So it makes me wonder if some of these, yeah, it kind of goes along with the Eight of Pentacles. It's like, are you doing the heavy lifting in your relationship? Are you at work, even if you have the glory of this elevated title, Do you are you doing the work of two people or are they taking advantage of you? And then you, not only that, uh, to add insult to injury, you have other people Maybe former co-workers who are resentful of your success and they're kind of giving you crap about it. All of those things can lend themselves to a lot of headaches, not feeling like um, you're in a good situation, perhaps. So just keep that in mind because... Um, in some cases, you may take that burden and you may, you know, it's called the, my, my book, um, Tarot Plain and Simple calls it the burdens of success. And that is, you know, totally true that when you have a lot of success, sometimes it's come, it comes with a lot of responsibility. So you have to accept the good with the bad, but then you don't have your own free time, enough free time sometimes if you're working overtime and you could burn out. This is the card of burnout. So keep all of that in mind as you navigate your life in this time period. Maybe it has something to do with the holiday crunch, if you will. But anyway, that's what I have for you, Scorpio. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, I'm promoting my double readings perfect at this time. As you have your solar return and you're looking at the year ahead, this is an, uh, some um, important transits for the rest of this year and the whole of 2023. Uh, um, some of the important astrological trends, you still are going to have eclipses in your sign and Taurus, and that can affect your own personal life and relationships. Um, and um, also... Um, it's a package deal because you get an hour of natal chart interpretation. And personally speaking to me, that's my strength because that's what I am really all about. I'm, I'm really all about the, the chart itself because the transits come and go, but the chart is forever and the chart. And actually that isn't even true because it's just for this lifetime. But what is your cosmic blueprint? What does it show? What are your pitfalls? What are the kind of the things that hold you back? What are your hidden talents? You know, sometimes those come out. So um, that's called my deep dive reading. And it's a special price because it is a double reading. Uh, you're buying it at one time versus those readings individually. But if you like, just if you don't even care about transits, I have just the natal. Or if you just want the transits, you know, I got like I love readings. So check the link below for more details. And thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Bye.